welcome to the MLC Presents, the writer behind the song, the Native American Heritage Month edition. Uh, my name is Dave Bogan. I'm the head of third party partnerships at the MLC. We're based in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Um, this series um, I curate throughout the year to showcase and highlight the stories of music creators, music industry professionals from historically marginalized, marginalized groups. Um, and uh, it gives us a way to connect um, industry to culture um, that's in a way that's authentic um, and that's entertaining. Um, so we're really excited to have this panel uh, join us for Native American Heritage Month. Um, and uh, you know, we're, thank you all for tuning in. Um, we will have a Q&A at the end of the uh, conversation. So there's a little icon at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a menu. There's an icon that says Q&A. If you click on that icon, you'll be able to um, post a question um, either directed to a specific speaker um, or to the panel as a whole. Um, and at the end, our moderator will go through those Q&As and, um, and address them for you. Um, and feel free to um, you know, react to some of the conversation in the chat. Um, we don't want to have you know too much of a chatty chat box, but if you have a reaction to something that's said, you know it's always nice to uh, kind of see the thoughts of the participants as we go through um, the one hour presentation. So without further ado, I would like to go ahead and welcome onto screen our moderator for today, Paul Stewart. Please join us, hey Paul. Hello everybody, how are we doing out there in Zoom land? Yeah. So, Paul, um, so tell us a little about what you do um, and what is 2XG, uh, what tribe are you affiliated with, and sort of what is your day-to-day -day like in the music industry? Thank you, Dave. Yes, uh, my name is Paul Stewart. I am a POMO from Elem Indian Colony uh, Reservation or Rancher in California. I'm a musician of over 20 years. I sing, I play guitar, I songwrite, I produce. Uh, I've toured all around the world. Uh, I love music, and I just uh, I like I like share music, and I've also incorporated some of my own tribal culture and music and language into some of my songs that I do share, as well as doing a whole lot of blues. And my hero is BB King. And you are a member of MLC. How long have you been a member of MLC? I joined the MLC, gosh, two or three years ago now. From the beginning. Yes. Yeah, right in the beginning. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate you uh, obviously being a member of MLC and also um, participating as our moderator and curating this uh, panel for us. So we're looking forward to hearing. I'm going to let you take it from here and invite up our speakers for today. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, we're honored to, for the MLC to have this event for us. Um, Ed, Edco, can you please uh, join us, introduce yourself? Absolutely. I uh, got. I can't start my video myself. Um, I think the moderator has to start it. There we go. Okay. Hey, man. So, so my name is uh, Ed Coban. I'm a Mohawk lineage, and I live in uh, just outside Niagara Falls, New York, in Lewiston, New York. Um, I'm a guitarist and a Native American flutist. I've been the uh, House Band Coordinator for the Native American Music Awards since 2010, and the Music Director for the Native American Music Awards since 2021. Um, I've, you know, I've played with a lot of different artists over the years uh, as part of that, as part of my role in the Native American Music Awards. Um, I also have a, a solo CD that I put out in 2015 called How to Fly, and I'm currently um, rec recording with uh, Cody Blackbird, one of our other panelists here today um, in a project that we have called uh, Blackbird 3, as well as I perform in Cody's rock band, uh, the Blackbird Band, um, which is, I'll let him speak more to that, um, but currently those are my, and also I'm involved in a musical um, that's being developed in New York City called Gone Astray, um, that is hopefully, is in development, but should hopefully, you know, be coming out in the next year or so. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ed. It's good to see you here. You too, man. Hey, Cody, Cody Black, can you uh, join us and please introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. My name is Cody Blackbird. I am coming to you all from Casa Grande, Arizona, where I reside now. I uh, come from a multicultural background. I'm of Eastern Band Cherokee, Dakota, and Romani Gypsy descent. 
And um, I am originally uh, raised in Alaska and spent my childhood between Alaska and South Dakota and now reside down here in Arizona. Um, have my my solo career uh, as an instrumentalist in the Native American flutist, also uh, the band that Edco had mentioned, uh, the Blackbird Band, and uh, our new project that uh, myself, Ed Coban, and Matthew Knott uh, founded called the Blackbird Three, which is kind of a experimental uh, instrumental um, fusion uh, trio that we're doing. And um, so, yeah, I, uh, I've been touring internationally for the past 15 years and been blessed to uh, win a few Native American music awards and um travel around, play music, and glad to be here to talk about it today. Right on. Thank you, Cody. Delbert, Delbert, can you join us? Please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Delbert Anderson. I am a trumpet artist, a composer, and educator. I come here from Kirtland, New Mexico, traditionally known as the Diné Bikeya, and I'm very excited to be here. Uh, sort of my ins inspiration comes from my Diné culture, whether it be from uh, Diné research, um, history, um, sort of landscapes that you can find here in the Diné Pikea area and sort of make that work a, a huge part of my art. Thank you. Thank you, Del, for joining us. Um, Cameron. Cameron, uh, can you join us and please introduce yourself? I am uh, a guitar player of the Seminole Tribe of Florida and the Kiowa Tribe of Oklahoma. I've been fortunate enough to have been doing this for a little over a decade now. I'm a self-taught guitarist and I lead my band, the Osceola Brothers. We're a hard rock and roll power trio. And we've been fortunate enough to be touring around the country um, I've been fortunate enough to share the stage with many of my heroes. Um, a lot of my influences come from Seminole culture, uh, Native culture, Kiowa culture, whether it be stories of like the wars or like the struggles that we've been th going through and everything. And even um, stuff that we're going through today, whether it's like um, like suicide, mental health, um, a lot of that kind of stuff. And I'm very fortunate to be here today. Oh, thank you. I think... Um... If we want to leave our videos on or off, but either way, for our panelists, feel free to. But, um, so, yeah, great. I'm glad, so thankful that the MLC could organize this for us and give us a chance to speak and just and be seen, you know, by a larger community uh, that we're Native artists. We're, we're First of all, we're musicians. We're artists, musical artists, but we're also Native. And um, sometimes people, you know, when they think like this is Native American Heritage Month, and I'm thankful for the celebration, you know. But to us, we're we're Native all year long, 365 days a year. <laughs> so, um, one thing that uh, I wanted to ask you is, is uh, what well, what is your professional experience in the music industry, and then how do you bring how does your Native heritage come into that? Whether whether you kind of bring it in or you feel like it, it naturally occurs. Um, you know, those, those are relevant things to us because people, they think about Native Americans, but sometimes they think only of uh, the historical imagery or they think about the the lifestyle, culture, the spirituality, but they don't realize we're also a very modern people. I mean, this is real. This is 2023. We got Natives on Facebook and Instagram, you know, being real Americans and people of the world and also being Native. So uh, tell me about that. Tell me about your, your, your music career and then how do you bring your native heritage into it? So uh, can I call on Edco first? Oh, pardon me, Edco, I think you're still muted. There we go. Um, yeah, thanks, man. So as, 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 as far as my career goes, you know, I've been a, for the longest time, I was more of like a localized musician here around Western New York, um, and then had the opportunity um, in the early 2000s to to hook up with a Native American artist named Daryl Tonema, which is back when I actually met you way back in the day. Um, playing Man, with Daryl. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I was able, that was my introduction into the Native American music scene. It wasn't, I didn't really seek out the, you know, to be part of the Native scene. Um, 
I was very happy to be accepted into it. And, you know, from that point on, it just things developed and I built relationships with other artists over the years. And then with my um, working with the Native American Music Awards, I was really able to 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 meet a lot of artists and work with a lot of different artists. So um, I guess that's kind of how the Native, you know, my Native heritage has, has come into play because, you know, some of the stuff I do is directly related to the Native music scene and you're right it is it isn't singing about the buffalo you know and and you know powwow jumps it's it's jazz it's it's metal it's hard rock it's it and it's everything in between you know so um i think it's great that we're finally starting to get some uh representation in the mainstream media more so it seems these days than in the past totally man i remember back in the day you you told me like uh, how you were experimenting with like putting like distortion pedals on the native flute and, you know, wah-wah pedals. And that was innovative because for a long time we played it traditionally. And, and I, sure. I like that idea that, you know, we as the, the new generation, the people today, it, it, it's our culture for us to innovate. We are both traditional and modern and innovative at the same time. So. Yeah. And I think Cody is a good example of that innovation with the flute that you and me talked about two decades ago. You know, you like know he's yeah. really, you know, he's taking that by the, that bull by the horns and really, you know, doing yeah. some cool things. Hey, tell us about that, Cody. Well, um, yeah, so I started out, you know, uh, very much uh, being a kid who was involved in our ceremonies and uh, our culture. Uh, traditional music was very much an aspect uh, that was a huge part of my life especially as a, a kid that was diagnosed with, uh, you know, mental health issues such as ADHD, uh, very much that grounding ceremonial music was what could help bring me down and kind of center me um, to be able to, uh, you know, keep a calm, if you will. Um, and so flute just naturally came into my life at a young age. And it just uh, was something that um, was able to, again, center me and calm me and and kind of bring me down and I always had this this vision or idea that I you know wanted to um kind of repay uh what that instrument gave to me to it and to the the body of of work and players that have have come before and are still doing it um and go beyond what has been done and I guess you know that's where you talk about the experimental um, you know, using pedals and, and distorting the sound and giving it a sound so that when people hear it, they're not, you know, expecting it. And, and they kind of have to do some listening to figure out what they're listening to exactly. But, um, you know, I've been blessed and honored to um, record with, with people such as Jackson Brown and, and John Popper of Blues Traveler and um, just a lot of amazing people with, within the mainstream that's really you know, who have, who have also been amazing allies. I uh, found that in working with these people, if you look back through their careers, they've always been there for um, Native people. And I don't know how that lineup happens to where you just meet these people and something happens and then you find out, wow, this person's been an ally to the Indigenous cause for years. And so through that, they're very encouraging of, you know, um, these sounds that you put into your music, you don't have to use words to tell your story. You know, we don't have to, to like Ed said, it's it's not about the buffalo and and powwow drums incorporated into the music. It's the sound. It's it, we're telling our story through what we're playing, whether that be guitar, whether that be flute, trumpet, um, whatever it is. Um, if you can, if you're a, a music lover, you can feel that. And Ooh. so that encouragement from um you know, artists that I've been able to work with has really helped develop my style of playing into what we do so that it doesn't have to come out in, in vocalization or words. You don't have to understand it that way. You can just feel it and say, oh, I understand what they're playing. Oh, I understand that story. And um, I think that's really important to to carry on through our music is because there's so many people out there who... Um, who just want to generalize and I'm sure m many others um it, probably everybody on this panel has heard from different venues sorry we don't do native bands and mm -hmm. I don't think there's any one of us on this panel that you know does the whole traditional music thing solely you know what I mean we might have that aspect to our our lives and careers but uh we're out there creating 
contemporary mainstream style music that should be recognized. And so for these people to not understand that native music is just music played by native people, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not an expectation of sound. And I think that's, um, that's always been my goal is to break those borders and barriers. Awesome. Yeah. Delbert, uh, how do you, what's your take on it? Yeah, I I started uh, music about uh, 28 years ago. I believe I was around like fourth grade and went through sort of the educational system of a band program. And, you know, I grew up non-traditional. And so um, it, I was uh, sort of had to go back into my, uh, you know, traditional roots um, after playing um, and learning, um, you know, the instrument, um, the trumpet. And it was um, very, very, uh, you know, different and difficult for me uh, just because of, um, you know, I, I was born on the reservation, but uh, didn't necessarily grow up on the reservation. And uh, when I look back to those who had stayed in the res reservation and myself um, not being on the reservation, uh, you could clearly see a difference uh, in terms of just, um, a, you know, education and uh, certain pieces of knowledge, uh, you know, business um, infrastructure or, or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, it's very, it comes from a sort of a, a different place. And so when first, when I very first started, uh, you know, um, you know, I was accused of sort of a, a sellout um, just because, you know, I was uh, making music that was uh, supposedly inspired by, you know, the sound of Native American music. And, um, you know, I I've, uh, was told that I was making money off of my culture. And, uh, you know, it's a very common thing. And, you know, it, it took a while to 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 try and understand that what what that meant. And so, you know, it forced me to to go to my elders and ask, is this OK? Is this appropriate? Uh, what can I do? And um, I was surprised that, uh, you know, our elders were so open and, you know, the, in, in my Diné culture, there's there's two words that I sort of uh, operate by. Uh, one of them is called uh, ke, which is a uh, family, and also uh, honjon, which is sort of beauty, balance, and harmony. And, you know, using these two things is sort of the basis of um, whatever project I do or music that I put out. You know, it's always with the intent of this is uh, going to try and create something, uh, whether it be educational or to uh, create awareness of a certain event. And um, that's kind of how I've been able to in, input, you know, my, my Diné culture and teachings uh, into this uh, sort of music industry that we're running around in. Um, however, uh, a lot of the indigenous wisdom that I received uh, from my elders, uh, you know, two things that have sort of kept me afloat and uh, motivated in this business was one, uh, you know, I had a, uh, great grandfather who always said, uh, you're always in service to another, um, basically meaning to humble yourselves in front of anyone. And, um, and my, my father and my grandfather have a saying uh, that you always uh, speak and treat someone as if they're at their highest potential. And so, you know, when, when doing those two things, um, it, it's, it's like you set yourself up for success. And also you're, you're very uh, aware of your surroundings and where uh, aware of others that you're working with, um, you know uh, that that sort of sparked uh, so many different projects that I have uh, currently, and they seem to be doing uh, pretty well. And uh, it, it's it's funny that I I am a musician, um, and you know I do play music. However, it seems like uh, the thing, something that's doing more of the work is not necessarily the music, but the meaning behind it. And um, uh, that's, it's, it's a great way to, uh, you know, just uh, stir up the pot and let people know that you're, you're there uh, for real and for something that uh, you really stand for. So um, I, I've been uh, very fortunate to, to run into, like uh, Cody was saying, just running into, uh, it seems like the right people. And I feel like, when you're doing everything uh, correctly, that that's that's what happens. You know, you you tend to attract others that are in the same boat as you are, and you you continue to grow with those people. Oh, thank you, Delbert. Yeah, talk about stirring the pot. Um, some of my, I have um, nephews and niece that are 
uh, part Navajo and part Ilampomo, like me, my, my sister's children. So, uh, yeah, they stir, stir in the pot. I think about uh, being out there on the res and having a mutton stew and fry bread. <laughs> Good times. Thank you so much. Cameron, tell me, what's your take on that? So I started playing guitar when I was about seven, but not really taking it seriously until I was about 12 or 13. And around that time, that's um, when I started playing around like uh, tribal functions and stuff like that. They would put together these performances with other um, tribal members that were playing instruments and stuff like that. And then when we started our band, we started playing uh, stuff like uh, food truck rallies and a bunch of free shows and everything. And um, as I grew grew older, we started playing more and music saved my life. I would generally not, I would uh, genuinely not be here if it wasn't for music. So I felt that it was my duty to kind of give that back and kind of inspire because you never know what people are going through. You don't know what, how someone's day is going and stuff like that. And so like music would kind of get me out of my head space for a little bit. And as we grew older and started playing more shows and stuff, people would come and say like, thank you after the set. And like, there's a whole weight behind that. Thank you that I had no idea of. And so like doing that and helping spread more awareness on um, like issues that everybody goes through and stuff like that is very important to me. And after high school, um, I went to Nashville and started going to college at Belmont University and between high school and college, I was very fortunate enough to meet people on the path that like that were allies too, and also um that believed in what we were doing, taking these young kids and wanting to you know put them put them in the forefront and like uh support them and stuff like that. So we were fortunate enough to like go to Barcelona and play for the first time and when I got to Nashville, I was like the only native on my uh on my campus and stuff like that. And then I finally found like another native. And I like being able to teach people through shows and through just meeting me and meeting my brothers and stuff like that. Like, cause there's been a lot of people that have been like, I you're my first native I've ever met. And I didn't think they were really around and stuff. So I was like, oh no, we're everywhere. And so they were like, Yeah, that's it's really cool to see what you guys are doing. And um a lot of people would come to me too and be like, you know, why don't you guys do like the Indian thing and everything? And I'm like, what? Like, I'm doing my thing. I'm the Indian. So like, <laughs> you're right. Like, you know, what do I you expect? That. And some people would be like, yeah, I think you guys should do like the dream catchers. And, you know, like a bunch of people would be like, are you going to like talk in your language and stuff like that? Which is, which is really cool. Like, I don't knock people that do that, but that's just not me, you know, especially that when I was growing up, I didn't want to be put in a box, um, you know, just being native and playing native music and stuff like that. Uh, like you guys said, like we are natives playing music and we just happen to be native and stuff like that. And then also a lot of people would come to me. Um, be I, f I feel like because I was native and because like I'm part of the Samoan tribe and Kiowa tribes, like I would get um offers to do tv shows or like movies and stuff like that or like write for movies but for the sole purpose of like hey can you talk to your tribe to get them to fund this or whatever I'm like I'm I don't know what you think what pool I have I'm just a tribal member and then like when I say something like that I never really hear from it again and so there's that that you get um in this industry sometimes um but yeah, like going to Nashville and playing more shows and growing, um, just meeting a lot of people that are like, you know, I needed that today or I needed this. I didn't know I needed this. And I'm just very fortunate enough to be able to be doing what we're doing and for as long as we've been doing it. And it's also helped me like meet some of my heroes. Like I've gotten to meet like Joe Perry and uh, Billy Gibbons and stuff like that. And to hear their take on like native issues and stuff and like hear their support for like what we go through and everything it's very it's a it's another boost to be like yeah you're you're going in the right direction like you guys said like you when you put that energy out there you're going to meet like-minded people that connect with that energy that are on that same wavelength and I'm very fortunate enough to be on this path and I'm very fortunate enough to be here and um 
like you never know who you're gonna talk to or inspire or anything like that and I didn't grow up culturally either I grew up on the res down here in Hollywood Florida but as I'm growing older um, I'm getting more back into uh, learning about our culture and our traditions and our ceremonies and stuff like that and that also I feel that helps put like better medicine into our music you know once you it starts with you so once you have that in you you can only you can use it as a, a conduit to put it out there and it'll inspire and touch whoever needs it mm. yes right on thank you for that mm -hmm. yeah I, I gotta say well um you all right here you, you all are my heroes um, i've had the the honor and the pleasure to see you perform live at various places each one of you and hear your music and, and like you said cameron your music has uh, made you know made me feel good so I thank you for that it's great music if I can I want to ask everybody please drop um, in the chat box drop your website uh, so that people you know can find you and find your music and I encourage all those tuning in and listening today go check out these artists go check out the Osceola brothers they rock check out Delbert Anderson he can blow that trumpet check out Cody and uh, Blackbird Band check out Edco uh, and the Edco Band uh, group and as well um, my music, Paul Stewart. So uh, I'm Paul Stewart. I have released a solo album two years ago called World Champion. Uh, prior to that, I've been in the music industry for 20 years, uh, performing in a duo band with my dad. Uh, my, my dad, Richard Stewart, we're both members of the Lemonian Colony. And uh, the group is called Twice As Good. So we started that out a long time ago. Uh, grew up on the res, moved to the urban area as, teenager, as a teenager. And uh, when I was like 13, my dad and my uncle were at home. And then my uncle brought, brought over a CD of B.B. King. It was actually B.B. King and Bobby Bland, you know, live together for the first time. And man, just the first two seconds of it, he played that guitar. Do, 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 do. I heard that and that, I just fell in love. Bro, I've been stuck on that, that moment ever since. Those four notes right there, they play in my head day and night. So uh, I love music. The blues, all the, the jazz, R and B, all that kind of stuff. It, it's touched me, and yeah, music makes me happy. It's what I live for. It gives me joy. So, and as as us native people and musicians, we create joy, and we press it into a into a, a digital file or a CD or a vinyl record, and we share it to the people of the world. We want to make everybody happy. We want to bring peace and understanding. Um, and uh, it's an honor that we've all taken the opportunity to also share our native culture. And where we're from and who we are, you know, because Native American history um, has, has been kind of rough the last, you know, 400 years or so. But today is a better day. And a today is a day I think that our elders in our community has grown open to sharing. I know that um, similar to all of you, I did the same thing is I wanted to craft something in my, tr my tribe's traditional language and rhythmic style. But I wanted to be careful not to respect our spirituality and follow our rules. So I composed a song and then I, I shared it first with my elders and my, my tribal community to get their approval and say, like, this is something that I find interesting and I, I want to share it with the world so that the world can hear us and how we sound. Uh, and I was so pleased that they all agreed and they said, yeah, this is the right thing to do, Paul, and you, you're on the right path. So, so I wrote a song and in Southeastern Pomo dialect, it's called Minakhe. Minakhe means beautiful music. And that's kind of what I feel and express as a native person and a musical artist to express about general, just all the diverse and amazing tribes, uh, Native American tribes and, you know, all over the Americas, really, our indigenous music is beautiful. And I hope that all people, native, non-native, all people can listen to it and enjoy it and let, and let it, you know, let it affect them and let them hear it and feel it and experience like we feel, because it's a joy. You know, since I was a little kid, I used to go to roundhouse dances with my, my aunties and uncles and my grandparents, our homo style roundhouse dances. And just that beat and that energy, the passion of our people um, singing and dancing and playing the drums, that no doubt affected me that even today, even today, I'm playing American music. I'm playing blues and rock and roll and R&B. But that energy, that, that, that beat just courses right through me. And, you know, I feel like into my guitar and my voice and and the, the rhythms of my songs, you know, so it is, even if it doesn't sound like our traditional stuff, whatever I'm doing, it is native music. And that's the same here, all our panelists, everybody, whatever they are doing, 
that is native music. That those are native people making music. Therefore, it's native music. So, whether we do it traditional or contemporary, we are doing it. So give a shout out to all this crew here. Check out the chat box, everybody. You can find their links and hear their music. Uh, let's see. I got more questions. Uh, tell me, what is how how important do you think it is to be out there as an artist and collect your royalties? You know, not only we're we're artists and creators and stuff like that, but it's also a little bit of business. You know, and sometimes there's complications, but I feel like you know a, a good and a positive culture loves and supports each individual and wants them to do well, wants them to be able to receive, you know, something for that. So um, anybody want to uh, jump in on that first? Let me call on, let me call on uh, uh, Edco. There you go. Yeah, so, you know, you know, I think royalties, especially in the age of streaming, you know, has really become more of a difficult thing to kind of to maneuver because, um, you know, the the way people hear music seems to me mostly these days comes from a lot of the Internet and streaming services where you're not going and actually buying the physical copy and and there, you don't have the product in your hand, you know, um, and that also makes a lot of choice like, you know, the, the it, no one sits down and listens to a whole record anymore. You know what I mean? So it's like they listen to a song and they make playlists of all their favorite stuff. So I think it becomes difficult to to track all that sort of stuff, especially when streaming services pay you almost nothing for your music. Um, so that's when I think, you know, getting royalties, it's great to have organizations that do that for you, that really help assist you with that. Because that is, you know, a lot of musicians, including myself, and I've been at this since my first show was, in 1985, you know, so I mean, I've been at this for a long time, you know, and, uh, you know, it, 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 if you don't stay on top of it, it's going to get away from you. And I, I, you know, having just recently got involved with the the musical theater uh, side of things, I, they, they do things a little different, like they own their, the product, the musical, and when people say, like, if there's a performance of it at a local theater, they kind of rent it out from the people who wrote it or the people who own it. So it's, you know, you get money directly from them just, just having the show. And that includes the script, the, you know, the, the music that's involved and stuff. And it's, it's, it's interesting to me how it's different from with, with just the straight music industry. So I think it's, it is difficult. I think that these days you really have to, to monitor what you're doing and learn. Like as musicians, you spend so much time learning your craft, learning your instrument and all the aspects of performing and the gear. And then, like you said, it's a business. And when it comes down to that, a lot of people just kind of leave it up to other people. They try to hire someone to help them. And sometimes that's not always an, a legitimate person. It's, you know, you're, the bass player's girlfriend wants to do something for, you know what I mean? And it never, so you, getting yeah. that professional representation, people who have a history of being able to handle that sort of thing, whether it be management, booking gigs, or chasing down your royalties, it's important to have someone who actually knows what they're doing and not someone who just thinks they can give it a shot. Hmm. Indeed. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, Cody. Yeah. So I think we're like Ed said, and you know, we're in a different era when it comes to royalty, uh, you know, tracing and, and making sure the artist is getting paid their dues. Um, myself and, and the band, uh, we've been with uh, Drive Publishing, who is uh, Jackson Brown, John Trudell, Marshall Tucker Band, Blue October are some of our other uh, roster artists on there. Um, and so we've been really lucky to have them not only uh, to work with us on, you know, making sure that we're protected and that our music is protected and that we're getting um, what is rightfully ours, but also walking us through the process and really you know, in this new age of of streaming where everything is is digital, walking us through and saying, hey, you know, um, we're here to help you. We're not here just to, like Ed said, take advantage of you and, you know, string you on down. And so it's really important that with these partnerships with, um, you know, organizations that that's that's who you're working with or people that want to see the artists succeed. 
and that aren't just there for a paycheck on the back end that don't just see, oh, here's some money, you know, I'm going to represent this artist and, and uh, end up, you know, dragging them along. But rather, um, if you're going to sign artists to your roster, uh, whatever it may be, you need to put every artist at the forefront of making sure that you're treating every artist the same, especially um, when it comes to if you highlight the fact that you're working with, you know, indigenous artists or any BIPOC community group um, that has often been, you know, uh, given the last uh, crumbs, if you will. Um, it's it's time that we start working together collectively um, as artists, but also it's time that we start holding these organizations responsible to their word. If they say that they're going to to help us, then we should hold them to it. And I think settings like this, the MLC, you know, all of these positive things coming together that can really help artists get what they deserve on the royalty streaming, um, you know, on down the line and then on into placement and sync. I saw that there was a question on that as well. And, and really, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a proponent of figuring a way forward for us artists to succeed through the digital age. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Delbert. Yeah. You know, um, I think uh, royalties are, are something that's uh, very important, important and, and can be, um, you know, very helpful as, you know, passive income. But I think where um, ma many don't understand is, the, the difference of collecting royalties versus streams versus a direct license. And so I, I try to do more with direct licensing. Uh, just an example, if um, I want to put my music on Sirius XM radio, I have a contract with Sirius XM radio. I, I wouldn't go through another, uh, you know, label or a licensing firm or anything, but that's, you know, that's the way I do it to, to make sure that I'm, uh, complete and control of all of the funding that does come out of it and the royalties that comes out, because that's the difference. I mean, uh, you'll get sense if you go through someone else, but if you have the licensing in yourself, it, it equals up into the thousands and this could be monthly. And so I, I feel like uh, a lot of times we talk about different things um, about royalties and, you know, sort of the the common, well, the the thing that's hard for a native artist is to find that, um, you know, that right person that's going to show them, uh, you know, the books that's going to explain it well to them. I, I think um, many of us end up uh, signing with things that are very easy, or it might just become because of due to excitement. But uh, when you sign, you basically, uh, most of the time you're selling um, half of what you're supposed to get. And when they talk to you in percentage terms, they're only talking about your percentage terms. <laughs> they want to keep theirs safe. So it's it's very important that you read the fine print. And, you know, there are um, there are entertainment lawyers there for Native Americans um, that that are that are totally they'll give consult con, uh, consultation for free. Uh, they'll look over contracts for you. And for a while, I, I've used them until I've been able to find someone um, who's very close and who who understands those uh, sort of deal makings. Um, I think film right now is sort of uh, where I, I feel all the um, uh, the dough is. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've been working on things like uh, with different uh, platforms like Netflix and Hulu, and their contracts just seem to get be getting heavier and heavier. Uh, you're you're going to need some type of legal help, and unless you want to learn it, you know, which is one way, but it it takes long, and you know, no one's getting any younger. Uh, so I feel like the industry sort of puts that push on you. Uh, just uh, the lack of knowledge that you know they're betting on that, and so um, uh, it's yeah, it's a very dangerous area uh, where you can do very well, or uh, you know. Uh, sort of get screwed over. So, you know, I'd be careful on all of that. Um, but, but uh, you know, I, I think it, it all goes back to relationship. Um, if you're able to really gel with the person and you know them very well, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, they're, they're honest and truthful about uh, what, what's going to happen. And uh, back to one of the questions that was on the Q&A, someone asked uh, 
about how to get you know their music in front of um, everyone. I, I like to track them down personally and introduce myself and so forth, uh, whether it be at a show or um, you know a, a conference. You know, there's all kinds of conferences like licensing conferences, film conferences music conferences. And uh, those are usually the people there that are, uh, you know, can make decisions. Uh, and so th those are the guys you want to know and talk to. Yes. Thank you, Delbert. Right. So the message out there is to, you know, do, do the best you can to stay educated and stay assertive, positive and assertive to, you know, make sure you reach out to all these organizations that you hear about and Register your songs and, you know, know the basic legal framework, you know, as, as a songwriter or as an artist or the publisher. And, uh, and if you're doing it on your own, then you're basically your own record company. So what does that mean to be in control of your master recordings and, and then, you know, how to get paid in this process? So I'm thankful for uh, the MLC, the, this federal organization, it's a nonprofit organization that was birthed out of the, um, was it the Digital Modern, Musical Modernization Act? Uh, to you know, help us artists kind of get get some of those royalties that sometimes you know missed us, or they they didn't make it into the mailbox, or they um, you know the various music companies out there the offices didn't know how to find us, but through the MLC they're getting our names and they're knowing where to find us, so they can send in those those checks and send in that that dough, right? We get we get all these little more dough. So thank you very much, uh, Cameron. Uh, what was your thoughts on it? So like growing up, I had to teach myself the whole business and stuff like that. Um, I was like 14, 15 starting and I uh, had to learn how to put the set up a PA and stuff like that, bring it everywhere. But then also learning the business side of it, because I was doing all the booking, all the uh, writing and publishing and stuff like that through like CD Baby and everything. And then fortunately enough, I was able to have people come into my life that managed um like athletes and stuff like that and so a lot of athletes would get screwed over in their contracts and it's always been important to me to own our art and to own the things that we create and oh sorry, sorry my animals and um sorry one second thank you cameron yeah that's the, that's the dog spirit right there reaching out so we get into that getting into that mode. Oh, for the, uh, a buddy of mine would say, oh, for the two-legged and for the four-legged. Yeah, I have a yeah. dog and a new cat. Um, but yeah, it's always been important to me that we own our art and own what we create and stuff like that. And also with royalties, uh, important to register those and to be able to collect what's being put out there and everything. And like I was saying, these people have been teaching me um the importance of like reading your contracts and finding people that would do it for you and also like help you learn along the way and so that's been very um very important for me and I've been very fortunate enough to have met uh, met people like those and um yeah like with royalties we don't like you get like half of a dollar like less than a dollar per like stream and stuff like that and um yeah, I wish I had half a dollar. I think mine falls <laughs> somewhere around half a penny. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, You're it's doing crazy. all right there, Cameron. It's crazy. Like, um, I'll just share this. Like, quarterly from our first, uh, we only have, um, I'm working on putting our whole discography on Spotify and everything. But so far, we have our first EP and a couple singles. And um, the EP was put out in 2016. And... The last quarter that I checked, we earned like twenty dollars from streaming alone, and I think that's really, really crazy. And um, it's just the streaming platform has become very interesting. Like you guys said, no one really listens to records and buys it unless they're like really interested in it, and like after the show and stuff like that. No one listens to records front and back, and I think that's really important because we make the whole album and we put our energy into like the artwork and like the the inner sleeves and everything and the the covers front and back and that means a lot to us and just so uh just to have it as a song as like 
these little bits on the internet it's really crazy to go from one platform to a next and then people want more but you can't really give them more unless you literally send them like a pdf of like what you made or something like that and um but yeah uh we're in bmi we don't have a publisher or anything i do all the management all the booking and we're trying to get um like a booking agency and stuff like that and sign to that. And we're working with some really good people that are, are trying to help us. But for now, and uh, since we started, we've been doing everything on our own. Cause, and I think it's really important that we all own our recordings and what we work with or like what we work to put out and stuff like that. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, right. To, uh, uh, it's a lot of work just to get that uh, half a penny for a personal listener. But, and I've, I've heard statistics now. They say that every day, every day, there are over 100,000 songs uploaded to Spotify and all of the streaming networks, whether you, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Spotify and Tidal and Apple Music and uh, YouTube Music and Amazon Music, all those big chains, right? So all of 100,000 songs are coming out a day. So it's really important that you just have to, you know, to, uh, we're artists, we're songwriters, we're producers, we're tour managers, we're booking agents, and also we've got to be promoters, promoters for ourselves. And it's a tough, there's no way any one of us could do it alone. So it takes a team effort, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm thankful in this music industry to have so much support and so much love and care just from our own native people. I mean, nothing else. It's great to, to play those hometown shows and see my native fans in the audience and always supporting me. Uh, they were there at the beginning, you know, when I was just starting. I think I was um, just sitting around my house, just playing the guitar and just practicing and learning. And my family encouraged me and my dad encouraged me and believed in me all the time. And uh, like, like you, Cameron, our first shows were at like native community events, you know, um, people were hiring us. So it's how we got started. And we have to remember that working together, we can make a bigger voice and, you know, um, helping helping all our native musicians to uh, get their music out there, get their name out there and let people hear it. Because it's, it's something different. This is our music, you know. We're, uh, uh, it's uh, there, there, There's 100,000 tunes out there. There's plenty of, of other artists to listen to. So this is a chance for us to say, hey, folks, if you got a minute, you know, tune in and, and check out some of this music right here. Uh, this is good stuff. So, yeah, that's it. But but uh, but whether whether you have a big hit or a small minor song that you can much play, the important thing is to be registered and let all those places, let all those music organizations know, hey, I'm that songwriter. I am that artist. This is my recording. Um, you know, th this is this is for me. So you do get that credit, and you never know. It you know it might be the next big hit. And then, um, and then when you cash in all the wonderful big royalties and you're you're rich, then uh, you can take us all out to a nice steak dinner, right? <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, guys. Um, I think we have just a little bit of time. Is there any in the Q and A? No. Anybody out there listening, if you'd like to ask any questions right now to us individually or to the group, however, um, feel free to put something in the Q and A box. I'm taking a look at the chat box as well. Uh, hello. Thank you, everybody. Yes, yeah, the old school music business was kind of tricky. There was a lot of you know, backroom deals and stuff. Maybe maybe things like that go on today. Who knows? But the important thing is stay positive. You know, be out there. Be assertive. You know, represent yourself. And also have an open ear to, sh to share and listen to others. Just find that find that community. You know, music is our own little subculture below the lower culture. So, um, and just a shout out and thank thank those fans, thank those supporters who do uh, who do follow you and support you and come to your shows and buy your music. Uh, that's that's so important. We we wouldn't be anything without our fans. We've got to give give first love and props to to all our fans. Thank you and to all the fans of to every artist here. Thank you so much, and please stick with us. <laughs> Uh, everybody, just reminding you, all the listeners, that you can find our websites in the chat box. Um, well, let's see. Let me. I guess we'll go around and let me ask you, what what have you got coming up next? What's happening tomorrow? What's happening in the next week or two? Uh, just take a quick 
a minute to uh, to state that we're we're getting short on time a little bit. So, Edco, what are you doing next? So currently, uh, with with Cody, we just last week uh, released our our debut of the Blackbird Three, which is a like improvisational fusion of guitar, world drums, and flute. Um, it's going really well. Um, I'm working on that musical Gone Astray, as I was mentioning, and we're going to start the read throughs, um, in January, like the table reads and that's going really well. It, 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 it's, uh, I'm excited about that because it does, it's one of the first times you're going to have a, a contempt, like a modern day native character being represented in a, in a 2023 way where they're, you know, they're not in a loincloth. And again, that, that stereotypical dances with wolves type or the, you know, the, the, the negative stereotypes that'll come along with it. It's a, it's a contemporary story with contemporary people. So that's coming up and then everything going on with uh, Cody and his band. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Cody, could you say that again? What's the name of the project coming out? Uh, the Blackbird three. The song is called, uh, or the album is called live from studio. A. we recorded it here in Buffalo at uh Robbie take hack from the Google Goo Dolls studio. Nice. Nice. All right. Cody, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah. So, um, we just got uh, done with a run of shows. I did um, some college gigs up in uh, upstate New York and Springfield, Massachusetts, and then uh, flew out to Cannon Beach, where we did a, a show celebrating Native American Heritage Month. Um, the town basically did a takeover of this coastal beach town, which if you've seen the Goonies, you know the the town with the, the rocks. Um yeah. And, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more uh, through American Indian Heritage Month of these towns coming together and organizations coming together and uh, wanting to do something to celebrate culture. And we're blessed to be a part of that. So we did that and uh, just got home and getting ready to um, do some work and performances here with the Native Art Market, which is a, a local Native owned uh, gallery in Scottsdale that also hosts an outdoor event with performances throughout the season and then heading up to Oakland this Sunday uh, for a performance in Berkeley um, we're going to be performing or I'll be performing at uh, Things Taken which is uh, an event held at the La Pena Arts and Cultural Center it's an event rethinking Thanksgiving and uh, lots of amazing indigenous speakers and artists there so doing that and then also recording with Jason Cropper of Weezer while I'm up there. Yeah, all right. There we go. Things taken uh, coming up in the East Bay, California, San Francisco East Bay on Sunday the 19th. All right, Delbert, what are you up to next? I think the, the most immediate thing is um, due to some of the research I've been doing, I'm going to be performing with the, the Farmington uh, concert band uh, to prom uh, not premiere, but to bring a piece back that was um, uh, very famous to a guy named Jacob C. Morgan. He was a Diné trumpet player, uh, probably uh, well known um, based on, uh, I believe he used to be the guest artist uh, for the John Philip Sousa band. So he, he was pretty uh, old timer. And so um, I'm going to be performing one of his pieces uh, sort of in honor of him and his legacy that he brought here to this uh, area. And um, I also have this uh, sort of long walk piece. Uh, it's about four and a half years long. Uh, composed it while I was in residency, and I have uh, quite a few participants. Uh, it's kind of speaking to you know Native American Heritage Month uh, continuing um, beyond <laughs> November, um, but uh, it'll last like four and a half years, and um, it, it's really fun. People are really getting in, into it and um, promoting um, and creating awareness about you know the long walk that happened. Uh, back in like 1863 to 1868. And so um, th those are sort of the, um, you know, projects I'm working on. And then it's um, a sort of jazz festival season uh, come January. Uh, we'll be at the um, Portland Jazz Fest, Tucson Jazz Fest, and San Francisco Jazz Festival. All right. Very good. Delbert Anderson. And then sometimes you go by Delbert Anderson or you also perform as uh, Didat. Yeah, uh, DDAT was more of like a sort of like our hip hop um, kind of like phase. And um, it's also a collaboration phase that uh, anytime we work with 
uh, spoken word artists or MCs, um, you know, we'd kind of like to label that DDAT. So uh, it keeps it a little, you know, different than uh, the trio and the quartet, uh, which we are all kind of known by. And it's getting confusing. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. Thank you. And uh, Cameron, what's uh, what's up next for you? So we just finished doing a run of shows in um, like St. Petersburg, Nashville, uh, New Mexico, Albuquerque or Arizona and stuff like that. And so right now we're finishing up our next album. It's going to be called Remember to Remember. And it's basically like kind of a concept album with uh, topics from ranging from like removal from the 1800s up until like uh, like mental health issues and stuff like that and suicide and uh we've been testing out a lot of songs from the road and I think the next single that we're going to put out is going to be called think for yourself. And it's basically about the first line from the song is you've been watching me. I'm like a knife in your side. And so it's like getting under whoever getting under people's skin and whether people like you or not, you're, you, they know about you. In regards to Native culture, we've always been under the government's watch and always been wanting to, we've always been like targeted and on the run and stuff like that, whether it's mm -hmm. physically or like in the digital, in the financial era and stuff like that. And so that song has been doing really good. I like to test out songs on the road and be like, oh yeah, somebody went to the bathroom during that song. So like, well, that that's probably going to be a back burner. But this one, uh, after the first the first time we played it, people were singing the chorus back to us. And it was really cool because the chorus goes, who's your master? Who's your slave? Who's the next man up? Because we're doing this again. It was I wrote it kind of during like the last election that we have, because like. What we're what we go through in the society goes beyond every four years of votes and every four years of pulling levers and every four years of just feeding everybody what they want to be heard. And mm -hmm. I think it's important for people to take everything with a grain of salt and really analyze and think about what's going on and like what impact you can have with your voice. Cause everybody has a voice and they expect us not to use it. And so I think Indeed. that's really important to, to talk about that also during the song. Like when we do, when we play it live, I'm really radical. So I like to just put things out there, whether people will like to listen to it or not. Like we played a show in Alabama with a Southern rock band called them dirty roses. And we did a run with them. And every night I would do a speech. And then at the end of it, they really respected me. Cause they're like, you know, some people don't really care for that political stuff like that. And like, I really like you guys because you guys just don't care. And you guys do what you want to do and will always be you guys and we really respect that and I'm like I, I really appreciate that because like if no one's gonna say it if someone doesn't stand up and say it first you know because everybody has these thoughts and stuff like that and it takes one person to have that domino effect and so if you can plant the seed you know so be it if that's all I can do you know I'll make people think about it or have something to think about because I like that in music I like hearing a line or something and it has like different meanings or something like that and uh, so that's what we're working on right now. I'm also starting my uh, my home studio and we released our independent record label. It's called FTR Records. It stands for From the Res Records. And so I've been taking clients throughout uh, South Florida and stuff like that, different kinds of indie bands, different uh, rappers and stuff like that. And my brother Sheldon, the drummer, he's also a producer. He does beats. And so he works with a lot of rappers down here. We just filmed um, a music video, a couple music videos for some songs that he did with our friend Vigilante. And that was really fun. I'm re really excited to have everybody see that. But for the record, uh, we're finishing up the back half, re-recording some stuff. And then I want to record some music videos. And um, one idea I have for a music video is that like we're tied to a tree like a cut down or burning tree and then gets set on fire and the camera like pans around all of us. And like, as like we're burning and stuff like that, like our clothes are changing and we're singing, like whether it goes from like traditional into like what we would wear now, like a, like on stage or something like that. I think that would be a cool concept. And so I'm working with uh, different people to see how we can make that happen and stuff. Cause I'm real. people are really excited to hear what we have. We built up a lot of demand. Uh, we released uh, a song called Gold Digger and 
a music video in July. And basically that song and the music video was about removal and genocide and the military industrial complex and police brutality and racial injustice. And so you really think about it, you hear it and you're like, oh, Gold Digger, who is this about or whatever? And you yeah. think it's like America is the biggest gold digger ever. So all they do is take, yeah. And so um, I was really proud to put that out. And um, I'm really excited to see how this next album is going to become or how it's going to be received and stuff like that. Because people are really asking, like, when are you guys going to release this song? Like, what's this song where it's like, who is your master? Who's your slave? And I'm like, oh, let's think for yourself. And also working on new merch and putting out um, a new online store and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, just ready to to go red hot. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much, Cameron. Yeah, do tune in, everybody. Um, they just dropped our websites once again in the chat box. So go ahead and copy that, folks. And uh, please take the time to you know, check out all this great music that's going on. Uh, myself, I'll be traveling in, in January. I'm going to Switzerland. I'll be headlining the Out of the Blues Festival in Samadown, Switzerland on January the 20th, uh, working with the great music train agency over there in Europe. And uh, also, uh, I got a spot. Uh, January 12th in Glasgow, Scotland at the Howlin' Wolf. Awesome little blues club there. Nice. Uh, and as well, doing all my gigs around here in the USA. So check out my website. You can find, you know, where I'm touring and playing and shoot us a message if you want if you want me to come to your hometown. We'll, we'll uh, set up a gig somewhere, some way. But I hope to work with all you again someday. God, it'd be an honor if we could get a, 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 a track together or something like that or a jam. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. It's about time for us to wrap it up. Um, thank you to everybody for tuning in and watching this presentation today. Uh, happy Native American Heritage Month to you all uh, in Southeastern Pomo. We are thankful to the, the great spirit above. All right. And if that's anything, any last words, anybody? Uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up now. I just want to say, Shanabashat, Chihichanalit, let me just thank you very much. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for having me. This was a really, uh, it was a really great conversation. I'm glad to meet you, Dilbert. Glad to meet you, Ed, Cody, Paul. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you. Yeah. Th again, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in, and it's uh, you know, I'm fans of all the uh, musicians here, and you know, along with you know, obviously me and Cody are are good friends and work together, and I'm um, just excited to see what everyone else has coming up here in the future. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Oh, we'll be got Tonka Chicha below to all of you. Thank you all. It's been great. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a nice afternoon until we see you again. Thank you, MLC. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Best wishes to you all.